So if I told you that plants actually do feel pain, would you stop eating them right here, right now? Because that's the situation that we are already in with animals, yet most people, could be you, continue eating them every day. Hi, I'm Serena, and I've been vegan since birth. Welcome to my channel where I talk about the what, whys, and hows of veganism and answer all of your questions that you might have. Today I want to delve into one of the most frequently asked questions that I get, which is whether or not plants can feel pain. This is asked sometimes, you know, do they scream or can they feel? Is it wrong to eat them because we're vegan? Well, I'm going to get into all of that and I'm going to go over three specific things today in what we're talking about. The first is, why does this matter? The second is, what does the science and evidence really say? And then third, how is this related to veganism and what are the ethical implications of what this data actually says? So the first thing we have to talk about today when we're getting into whether or not plants can scream is why this matters. And that's because a lot of times I've discovered that when people ask this question, they're not really asking it in full honesty. They're not asking it like, you know, oh, I care about living creatures as well. I want to be more ethical. You know, are you really living? Are we really living as ethically as possible? Can we do better? No, most of the time I find that people that are asking this are saying it as a sort of gotcha moment to point out the ethical inconsistencies in vegans who are already doing their best and trying to live a more ethical lifestyle. So that's why this really matters, because I really am interested in having this conversation if we're coming at it from an honest, similar place of we want to do better. But if your whole goal in asking this question is just, I want to prove that you are not being ethically consistent and, you know, where do we draw the line, then that's not really a great place to be having an honest conversation from. So let's actually get into what the science, data, and evidence tell us about plants and whether they can scream in pain. The first thing that I think is really important to lay out here is what living really means. Because both plants and animals are living. They're, they're living organisms. And so in biology, living means both plants and animals. It means single-celled organisms. It refers to bacteria. It's basically anything that has the ability to reproduce, to evolve, to respond to the environment and stimuli, to adapt, to grow, to, to develop, to change, all of these things that we recognize plants absolutely do and animals absolutely do. But for example, a rock doesn't. A rock is not growing, adapting, responding to its environment or changing in any way. So a rock therefore is not living and both plants and animals are. Now the reason I really want to lay this out is because lots of the things that I hear that are brought up as sort of reasons or justifications for why plants scream or feel pain or that, you know, therefore it's wrong to, to cut the grass or, you know, stab a carrot or something like that are really just biological mechanisms that every living thing has adapted and does by nature of being alive. So Venus flytrap or, you know, sunflowers that will tilt their flowers toward to follow the sun. That doesn't mean that they feel pain. That doesn't mean that they're really aware, but that is a biologically adaptive mechanism that helps them survive because that's what evolution does. Like evolutionary biology basically says all organisms want to keep reproducing and surviving as a species. Which doesn't mean that the individuals are sentient and aware, but that's just what being alive means. So single-celled organisms, bacteria, you know, they're alive and they do those things. So that brings us to what is the difference then between plants and animals and why do vegans, for example, have an issue with killing animals but, you know, think it's okay to continue eating plants. And this comes down to a bigger categorical distinction and what really matters and makes something or an individual sentient and aware. And the big factors here are one, having a central nervous system and two, you know, having a brain and the ability to transmit, you know, neurotransmitters, things like benzodiazepines and have benzodiazepine receptors so that when something, you know, cuts you or you are harmed, your brain can actually process those signals and understand it as pain and something that you want to run away from or avoid. Without that central nervous system and those neurotransmitters and a brain 
that can intelligently process everything, then if you don't have those things, even if you're responding to stimuli in the environment, as plants and trees do, it doesn't mean that they're actually aware or feeling pain or observing it in the same way. So, that said, I have taken a look at what the scientific evidence says for whether plants scream and feel pain and... And what I found is that there is evidence, and, and several labs have collected data, showing that plants do emit actual sounds when they're being cut or in distress or not being given water in uh, the kilohertz frequencies. So way, way, way lower than uh, the human ear can pick up or any sound that we can perceive. To be fair, there isn't a lot of published evidence and data on this, but there are researchers studying it who have written books and talk about some of the data they have collected. So it hasn't necessarily been published or peer reviewed and accepted into uh, biology, but I don't always think that means there isn't something to it that we should look at and consider. I actually think it is highly probable that someday we might learn that plants are more intelligent than we've realized and, and you know we should give them the benefit of the doubt. But as of right now, that is not what our evidence really shows. And everything we know about plants being able to feel pain or scream in pain means that even if they respond to stimuli or that they are emitting these sounds in distress, they still don't have that central nervous system and brain to process it and be aware of it. And so this is the difference between, say, animals that have the ability when they feel pain to run away from that pain, to escape it, to try and avoid it. They have that ability to be conscious and aware and, and perceive it. So pain is adaptive for animals, whereas plants, which are generally rooted in the ground and can't move, when they, you know, if they were to feel pain or be screaming in distress, it doesn't have that same adaptive benefit. Now, plants are still intelligent in their own way. They are still alive and they do evolve. And so when plants get their leaves cut and they seal it over, repair damage or, or create their own band-aid when something's happening, again, that is an evolutionary benefit to them. That helps them as a species survive but that doesn't mean that they're consciously aware of that and, you know, wanting to do that in the same way that individuals, animals, uh, you know, in the animal kingdom that actually have that central nervous system and neurotransmitters. So finally, this brings me to my third point, which is what are the ethical implications of this? Especially for vegans or those of you that might be interested in going vegan, what is the, the moral implications of whether or not plants are screaming and can feel pain? And I just want to say this. If we are really trying to have an honest intellectual discussion here, then we both have to be starting at the same place, which is saying that if we think an individual or a species is sentient and aware, can feel pain, perceive it, wants to avoid it, then therefore that is a criteria that means we shouldn't be exploiting them, breeding them, killing them, or you know, eating them. However, I have found that most people who ask me this question or bring it up have no interest in actually trying to stop harming plants or living more ethically. They're just trying to sort of say, gotcha, to vegans and point out a hole in our moral and ethical philosophy. If I'm out on the streets speaking for pigs and cows and chickens and fishes, you know, why am I not advocating, as, as some people have said in the comments in my videos, for insects or bacteria or plants for that matter? And so this is really the reason why. We know right now, beyond a shadow of doubt, that animals like cows, pigs, chickens, turkeys, fishes are all, you know, very sentient, aware, feel pain, recognize it, suffer, want to avoid it, are biologically adapted to do so, have the same, in many cases, have the same hormonal response systems that we do that make us feel attached to, you know, our young, our babies. So we know all of this. And yet, of course, most people continue to think it is perfectly acceptable and ethical to eat animals and are continuing to do so. And so questions about these gray areas or where do vegans draw the line, in my view, are pretty much irrelevant until we are all on that same page of agreeing that sentience and pain and suffering mean we should stop exploiting those individuals. 
Once maybe society gets to that place, then we can start to have a more honest intellectual discussion about whether or not we should be caring more about plants that right now we really don't have enough evidence to at all indicate that they are sentient. It may be that someday we learn that there's a different kind of sentience and intelligence that doesn't require a central nervous system and brain, but we don't have that right now. And we do know that other non-human animals do have these things. I'm not sure whether we the science is really settled on how many insects and, and which ones are really sentient or not. Again, to me that's irrelevant if we can't agree that we shouldn't harm the already proven sentient living beings. So, the other thing that's important here is we still have to eat something to live. And we can avoid eating animals and we can live perfectly happy and healthy lives, which I am an example of because I've never eaten any animal products and meat and dairy in my life. But I don't really know if it's possible at all to live without eating plants. That just, that's a, a little far out there at this point in time. Maybe our technology will evolve, who knows? But right now we have to eat something. And so therefore, I think it's pretty clear we should be eating the something that we don't have any proof is sentient and avoiding eating the things, the individuals that are intelligent and sentient. But that said, if you really do care about doing the least harm possible and you are worried about plants and worried about them screaming and suffering in pain, what can we do to avoid harming you know, more plants. And the answer to that is still going vegan and eating lower on the food chain. And that's because there are incredible inefficiencies in producing any animal products. It just takes so much more land, water, resources, plants, and inputs. If you just think about a cow and how much meat you could get, you know, from killing a single cow, well, that cow had to grow and live for upwards of two years before they were killed. And during that entire time, they're either grazing on grass or being fed grain. And they're eating all of that plant matter, which if we just cut out that middleman and went right to eating plants ourselves, we are actually killing and eating way fewer plants. So that kind of sums up our, you know, do plants scream today. And please hit the thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe below. And make sure when you're subscribing, you actually hit that bell button so that you'll get notifications next week when I release another video. See you then.